Hello everyone, in this video we're looking at backing up and extending the storage of your Synology NAS. Now I have the this unit here, the DS1511 Plus. Um, I had this for a couple of months now, it's running flawlessly, so I'm very happy with the unit. So I've got five hard drives in it in RAID 5. So what happens when I reach my storage limit, uh, I don't want to upgrade any of the hard drives in the system, I want to add an additional unit instead. Well, this unit comes with, I believe, two USB ports, but also two eSATA ports in the rear. Now, these are used to extend the storage of your Synology NAS or to attach backup drives. So you can easily back up your NAS rather than going through a computer or Mac or so on. Now, you have a couple of options when it comes to extending the storage of your NAS. One of them options is to purchase an additional unit called the Synology DX510. Now the 510, I have it up in a tab here, looks exactly like the 1511 Plus. So it's a, a 5 bay unit again, just like the original 1511 here. So the 510 is a 5 bay unit, but it's not a NAS in itself, it's an expansion unit only, so it increases the capacity of your original Synology NAS. You cannot buy this unit as a NAS in itself, because it will not run the actual disk station software. It's basically, think of it as though a 5 bay drive with a RAID card thrown in, no more, no less. So you would connect this into the rear of your 1511 or to the rear of your Synology NAS via an eSATA cable. Um, eSATA highly recommended over USB because obviously of the speed. And you can use this to either expand your original NAS unit. So you could expand the original uh, sorry, you can expand the original volume. So create one large volume or you can create this as a separate volume, so have it uh, appear as a separate folder in your room, my computer or finder, um, create your separate shared folders within it and so on. So it says here you can immediately scale up capacity by an additional five hard drives. So the RAID volume on this Synology disk station can be expanded directly um, or you can use it to um, create a separate volume so again it's it's not necessary to actually buy this unit you don't have to buy this unit to expand capacity so i haven't purchased this unit instead what i'm using at the moment is a my book studio edition 2 drive which we can see here um, i've got a four terabyte drive at the moment i believe i created another video on this so i'll, I'll link you to that uh, below so this is a dual drive unit, two two terabyte drives within it. I've actually got it set up in RAID 0 at the moment, so it's striped across, so I'll get the full four terabytes of space. So at the moment, that's connected to the rear of my 1511 Synology Dist Station NAS via eSATA, again to try and keep it as fast as possible. I don't use this as an extension to my NAS drive, I use it to back up all of the data on my NAS. So let's have a look at um, my finder window at the moment. So if we go into finder at the moment, I've got my disk station here. So you can see I've got my own data folder and my three shared folders, which I use. Uh, I've got DLNA and iTunes service services enabled on my NAS. So it creates these three shared folders where I can uh, place all of my shared files. Now I'm just going to go and switch my my book external drive on and we'll see how that appears in the finder also. Okay, so I've just connected my external drive now. So if we go back into finder, back into disk station, there we go. So obviously connected via eSATA, so hence the name SATA Share 1. I don't think you can change this, but as I said, the my Synology 1511 Plus comes with two eSATA ports in the rear, so if I was to connect an additional drive, it will come up as SATA Share 2, uh, just so you can distinguish both. 
Now, if I go within this, I'm using this as my backup drive rather than an extension, but you can, you can see that it comes up as an additional share. So you can actually use that and start saving data directly into it. Um, it all looks like one unit within the disk station here. So if I go into my backup, here's all of my shared folders, my original data folder, and if I go into here, it's some configurational backups of the actual disk station itself. So if I now log into the disk station via the management area here, so here we are at the actual disk station management system, So it's loading and when you first connect your drive you'd want to go into control panel external devices and the eSATA disk is here so if we can click on that we can get info on the drive so it's disk 1 partition 1 on the SATA share the total size so mine's a 4 terabyte drive it's just over three and a half uh, terabytes once formatted and the file system is ext4 Bear in mind, when you connect your drive, you will need to reformat the drive um, so that you can use it as an extension to your original disk station. And you will need to format it in the same format as your Synology drive. So mine is ext4, so I've formatted it in ext4. So if I close this, you'll, you would format the drive there, or if you want to eject the drive, you no longer want to use it, eject the drive just here. Um, so if we go back to control panel um, and we go sorry I've got the link up here so back up and restore I've already created one backup as we saw earlier on so here is my full backup you can schedule this backup if you want to schedule the backup I just uh, run a manual backup every now and then uh, when I feel the need um, click backup now and it will synchronize everything you have on your NAS onto my external drive here. Alternatively, you can back up certain files, certain folders, um, so you could just back up your most important data if you wanted, and so on. So very easy to use the backup just there. You can configure the backup here, so you can configure the entire backup schedule and so on, and shared folder synchronization there. So very easy to run. As I said, you can create uh, scheduled tasks for this. So you can uh, create, if I was to create a new backup job, you go through the wizard and give it a name and so on. Uh, I want a network back, uh, local backup, sorry, because it's on the local disk. The, um, give it a destination. Ch choose which folders you would like to backup. Give it a password if you would like to secure it further. I haven't selected, a, let's just select one so we can go through. And this is where you would create your schedule so you can have it back up. If you leave it connected to your NAS indefinitely, you could uh, have it back up every week, for example, or every day, uh, so you don't have to do anything. Bear in mind, you do want an external backup of some kind, so uh, a separate backup you store off-site. So for example, um, if your if my dis if my house burnt down, um, I would want an, a backup offsite. So I could remove my backup drive as it is now and store that offsite every now and again. Bring it back to do a local backup. Um, always best to have as or at least two backups. I would recommend. So that's how you would attach and use an external drive with your disk station. Very easy to do, it's uh, pretty much plug and play. Hope you found that useful.